sea itself is 27 kilometers in circumference, and in this tunnel that's underground are two tubes that are evacuated, and there's no air inside of them at all, and they will run beams of atoms through those tubes that are very close to the speed of light. Actually, the nucleus of the atom, not the electron that's around it, but just the bare nucleus of the atom will be accelerated in those tubes, and they will then be collided into each other. The beams will have the atoms going in one direction in one tube, and in the opposite direction in the other tube, and they will be able to switch the beams at different points around that circle, and run the two separate beams into each other, and collide them. Smash into one another. They'll have phenomenal amounts of energy. Each collision can produce hundreds of new particles. For a moment, we've created a mini Big Bang. And in the process, the, all of the high amount of kinetic energy that is present will allow new particles to be created, basically the reverse process of Einstein's equation that energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Well, what they do is, instead of obtaining energy from mass, they create mass from energy. And so they will be able to create new particles. That's basically what they want to do is they want to find out what kinds of new particles can be made, help get an understanding as to some of the theories that people have developed as to how these processes work. The difficulty is that there are some of the particles that might be created uh, might have disastrous consequences because these are things that have never existed on Earth before. And the two in particular are the micro black hole, which some people believe will immediately evaporate, and if that were the case, it wouldn't be a problem. But if it doesn't evaporate, and there are some people who believe it won't, then it could be a problem. And the other particle could be created as a strangement. Now, all of the atoms of our solar system are made from protons and neutrons, which are made out of up quarks and down quarks. Everything is made of up quarks and down quarks only. The collider will be manufacturing a third kind of quark from the energy called a strange quark. And some of the theory shows that if you create enough strange quarks, along with the up quarks and down quarks that are present, that they can recombine into a new kind of atom that's never been existent on Earth previously, and that's called a strange atom, or a strangelet, and that roughly equal numbers of up, down, and strange quarks. And the reason it's believed that this could come into existence is because it's more stable than the most stable kinds of atoms we normally have. The most stable kinds of atoms are around iron, iron 56, that's why there's so much iron in our planet. It's the end product of a star that, that is undergoing fusion. The light atoms fuse and become heavier and heavier and heavier until they become the most stable kind, which is iron. Heavier than that, they are less stable and they tend to fission or split apart. So iron is our most stable normal atom. A strange loop would be far more stable than an iron atom. So it's believed that a strange loop could start fusing with all the normal atoms that make up our planet and ourselves and all the plants and animals our planet into one large strange atom. These will be the highest energy collisions we've ever made. It's led some to wonder if we know what we're doing. Any day now, the Large Hadron Collider is going to be turned on. It is 17 miles in circumference. It is the largest machine of science ever built. You could put Manhattan inside the Large Hadron Collider. That's how big it is. 10 billion euros for this fantastic machine. In principle, it could create many black holes, but it's not going to eat up the Earth for several reasons. First of all, the energy of these black holes wouldn't even light up a light bulb. These are subatomic, smaller than a proton. They're not going to even light up a flashlight. Second of all, the Earth gets hit with them all the time. The Earth gets bombarded with particles much more energetic than anything a puny large hadron collider can do. And these particles decay. They decay almost instantly. Now, what we really want to get out of the large hadron collider is something that is so fantastic, it could rewrite all of science. We want to create something called sparticles super particles that represent the next set of vibrations of the super strength. One of the wildest speculations is that the LHC will be capable of creating black holes that will devour the Earth. You maniac, you're going to destroy the planet. It's what everybody wants to know about because it's such a cool idea, right? I mean, here we have LHC. It's looking at the universe at the earliest times. What if it could make black holes? Wow, two interesting things happening at the same time. Personally speaking, I think it's incredibly unlikely. I mean, so unlikely as to the point that I don't think there's any way they can be made. You don't forget, people take this very seriously. When there was this theory that came out that we could make black holes, CERN took it so seriously that they made this special sort of risk assessment, you know, really just to make sure that there wasn't going to be anything untoward happening. No one need worry. Nobody knows how long it would take. It would not happen in a few minutes or a few hours. It would take literally years to decades, centuries, millennia. We don't really know how long because uh, nobody's ever observed the process before. We have estimates. The estimates range from a few years to a few trillions of years. Even if black holes do show up, they will not destroy the Earth.
much more likely is that the LHC will create Higgs particles, and we've had to go to extraordinary lengths to be sure of detecting them. Not one, but four colossal particle detectors have been installed around the ring to take pictures of what happens when protons collide. We are now on the verge of being able to detect signals from the 11th dimension, signals from hyperspace. We live in a three-dimensional world, but in our three-dimensional world, there's not enough room to unite all the forces of nature. Gravity, light, the nuclear force, the three dimensions is too small. We've tried to put these forces together in three dimensions and it failed. But in 11 dimensions, these forces just melt together into one beautiful, gorgeous theory that would allow us to, quote, read the mind of God. <laughs>